Welcome to Off the Press, the program where, as usual, we take a look at the national dailies and try to dissect it and make sense of it. And with me to do so this morning, it's uh, Akin Pelu Ajidahum, yes. <laughs> who is a political yes. analyst. Good to have yes. you here. Thank you very much. And of nice course, um, public affairs analyst, Dr. Femi Idowu Adegoke. It's good, good to morning. have you both. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Uh, you, you were just explaining your name to me, Ajidahum. Yes, it actually means wake up and answer. So, so, so as soon as we call you, just <laughs> okay, so we'll be calling upon you very soon. Uh, right. We'll begin this morning with, uh, we have five papers, but we shall begin with the Punch newspaper. I believe it will be displayed uh, very soon. And the headlines there, investors reap uh, 112 billion naira from bonds in 11 months. And that story, as displayed already, is on page 27 of the Punch newspaper. No border reopening until Bennett and others respect protocols, according to the federal government. That story is on page 2. And again, IMF warns Nigeria against rising debts, and it's on page 32. Telecom firms threaten to disconnect banks from USSD on page 31. And Abuja's rising population worries uh, reps lawmakers demand more infrastructure on page 21. The big story is IPPIS, which is Dr. Femi's favorite story. Uh, federal government says lecturers enrolling, despite ASU's opposition, were employed individuals, not unions, government tells ASU. And that story is on page two. Uh, we can see picture stories of corruption is hate action, uh, prosecute hate actions. And that's an anti-hate speech, social media bill pro bills, protests, Rock National Assembly, and that was yesterday. The story is on page 18. You can see picture stories, say no to social media bill, hate speech bill, and the likes. And a $1 million scam, board suspends Kirikiri prison boss and eight others on page 8. And EFCC wants to seize my Loring home, says Saraki, and that story is on page 10. Federal government approves 19.52 billion naira for Oyo, Kanu, and FCT routes and others on page 31. And Lagos begins minimum wage payment this month on page 20. And Imo police surgeon commits suicide over delayed promotion. That is really sad. We've detained cops who abducted fashion designer, according to command. And this, this story is uh, on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And lastly, Mackin Day inaugurates five-man panel in Lautech ownership on page 10. Where do we begin? Dr. Ido let's begin with you from the far left. You know, one of yeah. your favorite stories here. Yeah. The federal government is making his uh, headway. That's the, the, the ASU? Yes, the IPP. federal government and ASU. Okay. They've been at loggerhead on the IPPIS, which for me, that's the right way to go for accountability and transparency for government to enroll their employees. Mm -hmm. ASU has come up with an ag argument that they have autonomy of operation. Mm. That's the universities. But my question is, the federal government employs staff, they employ lecturers to work in the universities before they become members of ASO. Mm -hmm. And then it is the federal government who is solely responsible for their salary, for their payments. And then, and that's why we, we've said it before, that the universities can, if we want it to be what it should be, like the global standard. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be only be funded by the government. Okay. We need, so, and it's only when you have that, because they're saying who plays the pipe dictates the, the tune. Mm -hmm. And for me as a responsible citizen, I feel the federal government is going the right way to curb corruption, to curb leakages, mm -hmm. to curb uh, ghost workers by and unluckily for us, out of the 43 universities on federal government list, they already have 41 registering, take, giving their biometrics. Mm -hmm. So it's a, for me, it's a lost battle for us. Mm -hmm. Because three, what can three, you know, three will, eventually those won't, they will come on board. They will come back, yeah. I guess so. Okay, uh, at King Pebble, what are, what are your thoughts? Which of? Well, personally, I would like to say that I feel the fact that the federal government is the only one funding this situation is kind mm -hmm. of, it's not enough. Like there needs to, like Mr. Femi said, there needs to be more hands. Mm -hmm. And it's generally known that like public organizations aren't as efficient as private organizations. Mm -hmm. So they need to, I don't know, perhaps maybe one way or the other incorporate more like 
businessmen to increase mm -hmm. the efficiency of you know just maybe that to make a difference if, exactly okay so moving forward um we have other stories here no border reopening until the name among others which one do you want to speak to any of it okay i would actually like to talk about the the yeah. border situation yeah yeah exactly okay. what are because your thoughts on that i feel the, the border situation is a case that Nigerians have been crying for for a long time in mm -hmm. the sense that we need to be more self-sufficient. Everything is imported in Nigeria. Including toothpick. <laughs> including toothpick, exactly. Sad. And even, even the water and even the rice, and we know Nigeria is such a, the whole idea of the green, white, green flag is vegetation and growth. Mm. But yet we don't see enough of that in Nigeria. As, even currently as the border has been shut down, there are still people smuggling rice from Vietnam, from third party countries, coming in and you know that shouldn't be mm -hmm. so i feel that the government needs to implement like stricter border Ranges. security exactly on the border lines they need to be like vehicles roaming the it, it, the same way in america for example the border lines you see they have patrols mm -hmm. morning and night they have shifts nigeria should implement something like that they should take in the positives from these world powers and bring it into the country so that you know the economy can grow because mm -hmm. the, the the idea is there but I feel we need more of a, a will and more of an intent mm -hmm. to really get it done exactly. I completely agree with you. I like the way you've put it. Dr. Femi, what are your thoughts? Yeah, on the border closure, mm -hmm. um, it's not, the, the federal government has said there's no reopening except the neighboring company, uh, countries, countries like Benin respect comply. And protocols. yesterday I was listening to the Minister for Finance on this issue. Mm -hmm. And she actually made mention that all countries in Africa signed to the protocol, mm -hmm. which these countries have not been meeting. And so if you don't meet those protocols, we're not reopening. Because for a long time, Nigeria has been subsidizing yeah, other countries' economy. Yeah, it's true. Yes. Mm. Very true. That's, that's one. Then, yeah, we know that the repercussion on our economy, inflation has gone up from 11.2 uh, to 11.6%. Mm -hmm. We know that. But the truth is that this, off. yeah. But the truth is that we, this has to be taken. These steps mm. has to be taken. And like he said, I'll reiterate: we need a process, a proper monitoring process, an evaluation along our borders. It is not just good enough to close the border and not put the right structures in place. Mm -hmm. But I mean, and it's not, it's not only Nigeria that's closed its borders. Other African countries, there have been occasions, you know, where other African countries have closed their own borders for one reason or the other. So yeah. it's not entirely out of, you know, yeah, the norm, out of place. so it's, to speak. It's just that for the people, the common man, the, uh, the effect on us, mm -hmm. inflation going up, there is scarcity or there is high rise in price, Things you were buying for social amount has gone up. Mm. We know, but those are prices you pay for a process. And for it's a just temporarily. Yeah. Uh, again, it's according temporary to process, yeah. uh, Ahmed Zainab, uh, when yeah. she was speaking on that yesterday. Okay, so we have uh, Lagos begins uh, minimum wage payment this month. Uh, we have Imo Police Surgeon commit suicide. Isn't that sad? The suicide, um, you know, a policeman commits suicide over delayed promotion. Is there yeah. anything that justifies? Would there be anything that justifies suicide, so to speak? Definitely not, because mm -hmm. it's first of all, it's already it's a sin to take your own life as you're meant to come to this life to live it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But it also s tells the tale of the the level of suffering. And I would, okay, I don't want to put it as suffering, but the level of unfortunate existence in Nigeria, in mm -hmm. the sense that it's the standard of living is very low, and so when a, po a policeman, for example, we know that their payment is not that high. Mm -hmm. So when he sees the opportunity of promotion to make more money, the, the, the hunger is there, but then because of the way the, stru the hierarchy structure in the, um, system. in the system is not so... It's basically like it's a case where it's held up at the top. Mm -hmm. So for him now, he probably felt like there was no moving forward, and the only way was to take his life. It's a very unfortunate. It it's a very unfortunate mm. situation, but you can also see you can see reasons why he would go that far. Mm. I mean, again, that's there's an. I would say this seemed to be for me. This would be um, painting 
a, a, a negative impression on the Nigerian police also. Because the question would be, much as I agree with you, not, nothing justifies suicide, but the question would be, had they put everything in place for him, exactly. he may not go this way. But again, like we have said, um, nothing justifies that. But that's quite unfortunate there. Um, any more stories catching your attention or we just go in the interest of time? On the IMF. Okay, quickly. Well, uh, from the statement made by the resident representative of IMF mm -hmm. in Nigeria yesterday, it just explains, and uh, Mr. Rewan mm. reiterated it, that it's not a debt, that, because they're saying our, our debt rising debts is rising. Going up. But it's not this a, is the second time, you know, yeah, yeah, almost yeah. in the space of two, three yeah. months that IMF the is question, going The up. first question I would ask as a, as a public person, is who keeps us? Who keeps borrowing us? Who keeps giving us the money? money? <laughs> I remember if he's saying that. Yeah. Who keeps giving us the money? Yeah, that's one. But the expert have now explained that it's not even the debt that is our problem, but revenue hmm. is a problem because the percentage of our gross domestic product mm -hmm. is so low to what the standard is supposed to your debt is supposed to be a fifty percent ratio. Then you are fine. But at the present moment, Nigeria's only is 28%. Hmm. And there's no, it's not, there's no uh, insight that is going to go oh, anytime better soon. anytime from now. So the government or the public sector, do, uh, private sectors, we need to do more mm -hmm. on increasing our productivity to have more revenue. Mm -hmm. All right. We hope that we'll get out of it one way or the other. We'll quickly go to the Vanguard newspaper in the interest of time. And the first uh, the big story there is IMF again projects uh, Nigeria's growth at 2.5% in 2020 below federal government's 2.9%. That story is on page 9, as you can see. And crack, crack down on journalists, activists affecting Nigeria's image. That's on page 10, uh, U.S. lawmakers to the federal government. Protesters be, uh, besiege NAS, demand end to social media bill, uh, IBB, Babalola, Flay, hate speech bill, and that story is on page 40. Um, short borders uproar in ECOWAS parliament, and uh, that story is on page 5. As ministers disagree over effects of closure on inflation, Benin uh, Republic failed to implement agreements with Nigeria, according to the federal government. Ghana, the Gambia, plead for immediate reopening. Uh, that story is on page five. Why we couldn't cancel Kogi results, uh, cancel results of Kogi by Elsa governorship polls? Uh, INEC is saying so. Uh, they're giving reasons there on page nine. And Bill proposing 40% annual budget for capital projects passes second reading in House of Reps on page eight. Nigerian businesses need disruptive techs to survive. That's according to uh, Jim Ovia, as the CEO of um, Zenith Bank. And then we have rites of passage for late Mobilaji Johnson begins uh, December the 2nd, and that story is on page 10. And that's about what I can see here from the Vanguard newspaper. You, this story you're interested in here, which is? One of the stories that caught my fancy was the bill proposing the 40% mm -hmm. annual, annual budget, budget for, for capital, capital projects. I actually saw that as a very refreshing situation because it's good to hear that it, honestly <laughs> it's because good to hear that the case was not it wasn't 40 percent before i believe it was about 28 mm percent -hmm. or even lower than that yeah. before and for the fact that it's not 40 percent shows that the the house the house of assembly is um the house of representative rather is willing to you know go a step further to actually improve sectors in the country mm -hmm. in order to increase our gdp mm -hmm. and see growth go so that the debt can go down for, mm -hmm. for example and that's just one of the positives that will come from this and one thing I also liked about that was the fact that the punishment for anyone who tries to obstruct the passing of the yeah. bill was very strict. And mm -hmm. I'd love to see that the 50, the 50 million um, naira, fine. as well as, um, uh, I believe it's a five-year imprisonment, or it could even be both. Mm -hmm. And I, I, saw, I thought that they finally they're, they're putting, <laughs> they're putting a, uh, like a, a, an measures. iron fist mm -hmm. on the, the rampant corruption that has been generally known in Nigeria mm -hmm. and I really that, that was really nice to see because you know there's this argument in some quarters that why there, there is so much impunity in this country is the fact that nobody holds anyone responsible so you exactly. can get away with anything like you yeah. said in fact if they can get both I mean offenders defaulters that would be a good sign to say you know it's not just talk this time there's action okay moving on is there a story crackdown on journalists activists uh, did you see the story 
Well, I, I've, not, I've not read that story, but the truth is that if you gag freedom of information in this present global village, you are seen as an anti-people. Mm -hmm. So it affects our image, which brings us back to Sean Ray's case. Yeah, and so, uh, yes, yes, you said the word revolution now. Mm. But you've arrested him, he's gone to court. Court has granted him bail, you have not let him go. He's still in detention. He, I don't know the threat they're scared of if Shore is on bail. I don't understand. But now they're even making the man get global, more global recognition. Attention, that's true. And he's now being seen as a prisoner of conscience. conscience. And he's gaining more ground. And then there are other things, uh, issues that this country is supposed to deal with, like the Electoral Act, which is, I'm bringing it back to what INEC said, why they couldn't mm -hmm. uh, annul or cancel the results from the election. election. Because it, they don't have the power, the constitutional power, they don't have it. And I read the story and it says, even the card reader is worthless now. Mm -hmm. yes. Millions of Naira or billions of Naira was Went spent that. to acquire that. And now we can't even use it because there's no law to support it. Yeah. And even INA went further that even in some cases they withhold certificate of return of some uh, candidates or politicians who they feel had not done well during the election. But because the law does not back mm. them, that they can only cancel election before the due date. They can they don't have the power. And it, take, it takes us back to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. They need to look at our electoral reform bill right. and then inculcate this tech. We have to go uh, electronic voting. Mm. Because if we go a long way to make a vote count, it will reduce to barest minimum the effect of uh, election uh, uh, Crisis, fighting, mm -hmm. and hoodlum, snack, block, bo uh, ballot box snatching. Nobody can snatch my box in my house on, on my phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even the time you and spend. The time. So people are. So there's. They need. For me, I've said it before. It is. This is. Is now they're supposed to do the electoral reform. No wait till eve of 2023, and now the president will now not assent. Mm. So we need to do that now. I agree with you. Uh, do you want to say something? Well, I would just like to add one thing that. Please go ahead. Due to the amount of money that's been spent on the card readers, mm -hmm. that at the very least they should make like a, they, they should make it recognizable by the courts, so mm. that in cases of like ballot stealing and all of that, it would also be because that's that is why a lot of um, electoral elect practices, uh, yeah, go on and because they know that the court when when it gets to court, it's not going to be recognized yeah. Yeah, by the court, so they know that it's not even a problem anymore. So if it's recognized by the court, they they would be less. Beaten around the bush, yeah. mm -hmm. and again, it brings it you know, to mind the case of uh, white elephants. Where when we don't really research or check what we need and yeah. find a way of making it work, otherwise, this might just end as one of it, and that would be unfortunate. So, in the, we'll go to the nation newspaper very quickly. And government sets to unveil oil block owners agency gives December uh, date, and that's on page 12. Uh, it will be displayed. Varsity payroll enrollments will curb uh, grafts, according to Uni Lorry. Um, and Uni Lauren rather joins the IPPIS, I believe. McKinley raises panel on Lautech or your bids for ownership on, on page eight. And um, smart card reader has lost its usefulness, says INEC. Agency blames politicians' courts for electoral wars. The SSD charges telecom firms to stop bank from using links and knocks for hate speech bill as activists march on Senate. And on, that's on page eight. Can Onaya Kong affect to lawmakers? kill the obnoxious bills and that story you would find on page eight and how nigeria and others can bridge 170 uh, dollar bills gap and they got to pay new wage this month on page 42. any quick intervention before we move on to another paper we've talked about most of the things well, there. just quick one on the lagos mm -hmm. and paying the minimum wage and they're saying they're starting payment from november mm -hmm. And then the head of service actually came out yesterday to say that the December, uh, the November salary was delayed to put things in place. Okay. So they're going to get, and it's, it's good for me, finally, we're beginning to put the minimum wage crisis to, mm -hmm. to bed. To rest. <laughs> uh, because if the states are beginning to meet, and Lagos has said it from onset, 
then they are willing to pay more. Pay higher, yeah. So that's, 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 that's uh, let's commend mm -hmm. Lagos State Government for that. Mm, some good news there. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go to this day. Obasanjo backs border closure. Federal government restates time for reopening talks among custom controllers of Nigeria, Benin Republic, Niger, and in deadlock. That story is on the front page, but it's continued on page eight of this day newspaper. And the Police Service Commission writes IG over violation of policy in CP's appointment. Again, IG ignores commission's request on deployment of police chiefs with no complaints on lopsidedness in police appointments, says the FCC. And Jim Ovia, youths need digital empowerment for transformation. That's on page six. It's continued on the back page. Any quick intervention? Uh, for the digital empowerment aspect, I feel like it's, it's a case where the Nigerian youth are known to be very smart, but it's, the environment is not conducive for them mm -hmm. to really express Describe. this genius. That they have. The only places that we really know of are the Yaba, um, they call it, is it Yaba Khan Valley, which mm -hmm. is supposed to be a reference to the Silicon Valley in America, mm -hmm. that's where the high tech everything goes on. But it's, it shouldn't just be exclusive to just that region only. You know, it should be in schools, like even in the public schools, they need to improve the, 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 the IT levels and, you know, there should be more computers, mm -hmm. internet should be cheaper. Working like, computers. <laughs> <laughs> more working computers, <laughs> up to date computers as mm -hmm. well, not just like 2001 re yeah. with, with new softwares. And sure. they need to like train their teachers and all of that. I feel like if we can get all of this done based on the new budget that's been allocated, mm -hmm. then we will definitely see some growth. We had it somewhere. Yeah. All right, uh, Dr. Femi, any no. intervention? No, I agree. I just want to mention about the uh, police and service commission, commission. Yeah. and mm -hmm. the police and the uh, IG. You have 40 seconds. <laughs> I, I hope they can solve these on time mm -hmm. because they've been on each other's neck for a while now. And it doesn't look good. And really. two cannot work together mm -hmm. if they don't agree. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look good. Okay, so it's on that note that we'll wrap it. Thank you very much, Akin Pelo, for coming. Thank and of course, me. thank you, Dr. Femi, also You're for welcome. being with me this morning to make sense of this. And this is where we'll call it a wrap for Off the Press. We'll do this the same time tomorrow here on Plus TV Africa, 8.30 a.m. for Off the Press, the program where we'll tell you all that is in the news uh, headlines and try to make sense of it. I am Amaka Okuyen. Have yourselves a great day.